As you know, the city and county of Honolulu has over 300 parks on this island. And then we have a whole bunch of golf courses. The Board of Water Supply has incredible pieces of land in virgin rainforest and down in the urban core. The point I'm making is we have a lot of real estate that has plant material growing on it, uh, that has uh, mulch that we use, and we are extremely, extremely concerned with the ongoing invasive species problem. You know, all of us here have seen sad stories. I mean, starting from way back with bird malaria that wiped out our native bird population, um, to more recently the gall wasps, you know, really doing huge damage to our willy willy trees. Very sad. Really, really sad. And now we have an issue regarding the little fire ant and, of course, the coconut rhinoceros beetle. And the little fire ant is a problem because of its very bad sting. Um, it's taken over the Big Island. You know, I grew up on the Big Island. My brother's still there. He talks about this little fire ant and the problems it creates, both at his place and also when we go camping and fishing. You know, it's just not a pleasant thing to have. And we want to make sure we can control this population and hopefully wipe it out much like the koki frog on this island, right? There's been some reportings of koki frog. We found some, we take care of it. So we're not gonna let it take over like it did on the big island. Um, and you know, it's amazing, this little tiny fire ant, which you can't even really see, so small, but so damaging to our children, to animals, and we need to do more. And today is about learning how to do more. It's about getting our guys on the first line, the people that you see here, the guys in the blue shirts, the other guys that are out in the field making sure when they see this, they know what to do. And we want to thank Dr. Lai and the Invasive Species Council and the USDA. Something that I am more troubled by is this coconut rhinoceros beetle right here. You can see the horn there. It's not very pretty looking. Although I've been told in Japan they make them pets or something, something like this, similar to this. But to think about the damage that this beetle can do to our coconut trees. You think of Hawaii, what do you think of? First, our extraordinary people and our diversity. And right after that, it's our natural beauty. And coconut trees are part of that natural beauty. And just like with the gall wasp, wiping out so many of our wheelie wheelie, including some of our ancient groves, to see the same thing happen to our coconut trees, I don't think any of us in this room or in our community want to see that happen. And unfortunately, these, these beetles have arrived on our shores and are actually multiplying and spreading, and we know that. So we're going to take action at the city and county level, working with the federal government, the USDA, working with the state, working with the Invasive Species Council, to educate our folks to say, when you see these, you need to take action. And we're monitoring and watching where they're going, how they're going. We're going to be watching our, our mulch piles to make sure that we're not providing good breeding grounds for these things. Because if they take hold, they will kill our coconut trees. And I was just told on the island of Guam, 50% of their coconut trees have been killed now in the past, what, five years? Five years. That can't happen here. So. We're doing our part, and we're calling out to everyone on this island, please watch, please report. If you see the, this beetle, you can't miss it. Please report it, to either to the city and county of Honolulu and Dr. Lai, who should they be calling yeah. if they you see can it? can call me, 768-4930. 768-4930. 768-4930. So we can then alert USDA Invasive Species Council. I did want to point out Many of us see these things hanging in our trees, at our golf courses, our, our county parks. I saw one hanging at Zippy's on Young Street and King, where, right next to the old wisteria. And this is part of the effort to monitor and find out where these beetles are. And I, I learned, I know there is a pheromone that attracts the beetle, but there's actually a light too. There's a solar powered panel here that it lights up at night because the beetles fly at nighttime. So they get attracted to the scent or the light, they fall, hit here, they drop down inside here, and then they can see, have they spread, and you've actually found beetles in these things. So the request here is when you see these things, guys, don't destroy them, don't whack them, they're not a piñata, they cost money, and they're protecting our environment.
So leave them alone so they can do their job and we can get the information that we need. I want to thank everyone here today, particularly our county people who are going to learn and be educated by Dr. Lai, who is a professor. I call him the bug man. I mean, he's had experience all over the world dealing with invasive species. And we're really lucky at the city and county of Honolulu that we got Dr. Lai out of retirement to come help us. He's fully engaged. And it's all about education. So we're educating our folks, the frontline folks here in this room today. So when they go back to parks, when they go back to golf courses, when they go back to our urban forest, when they go back to their properties on the board of water supply, that they are better able to spot a fire ant or a rhinoceros beetle and then know what to do. It's about self-empowerment. It's about protecting ourselves. And I ask the general community, the residents of the city and county of Honolulu, to also step it up and watch. Don't just assume, oh, I saw one, but someone else is going to take care of it. Step up, call, report, take action. So as you know, this is the female. It's not as big as the male. Doesn't have a horn. But these are the ones who go into the mulch pile, lay eggs, grow a larva. Larva hatches, flies up into the clo closest coconut tree, and starts to eat the inside of the coconut tree. And they can actually lay their larva in the coconut tree and create a colony there that just hurts the tree even more. So. Just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's less of a problem. Okay? Thank you so much.